Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my moon hopping series where I'm going from the outermost moon of Jupiter and then working my way down to Io one moon at a time. And we're actually going from one moon to the, ne to the next, landing on it, taking back off, going to the next moon, landing, taking back off, going to the next moon and landing, so we're not doing any kind of crazy, you know, triple slingshot or anything like that. I don't even really think that's possible at Jupiter. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And in the uh, last video, we... What did we do? I guess we took off from Ganymede, got into orbit, and started setting up our plan for going over to Europa. And uh, toward the end of the last video, we were kind of running low on time. So when I had the PEA down to, I don't know what it was, like 600,000, I think, went ahead and ended that part of the video, and then spent uh, just two or three minutes off camera playing around with the PEA, getting it down to where I want. Now, when we go from Earth to Mars, or from Earth to Venus, or Venus to Earth, or anything like that, we usually try to set the PEA 1,000 or 2,000 kilometers below the surface. When I did that, when I went from Callisto to Ganymede, I found that it wasn't necessary. At least it didn't seem like it was necessary to do that. So I'm going to try having it basically at the surface this time. And you can see it's trending downward anyway, so we'll, we'll just see where we end up. Okay, so let's check our notes now that we've got all of our plan done here. Let's figure out where we're at. So uh, once we have the PEA down to a value that we're happy with, press the page button on the Delta Velocity program to bring up the BV and AB options. Then press AB to carry out the burn. Optionally, you can press BV to view the burn vector page. So we'll do that, but let's get closer first because we're still almost a thousand seconds out. So let's get within uh, 300 seconds of the burn. Then we'll kind of take a look at things, because you can see how sometimes things fall apart in the last few hundred seconds even. So let's get to 300 seconds. About right there. And let's see if we can refine this a little bit more. We won't spend a lot of time on it, but let's just see if we can uh, get a better PEA there. And that's looking better already. And it's going up, so let's kind of go down a little bit. A little bit below the surface, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Again, we won't really concern ourselves too much with it, so... We're all set there. We're really close to the time to uh, do the burn, so let's go to the page, bring up the burn vector, and let's just manually orient the vessel so that uh, we can save the autopilot the burden of getting the vessel lined up for us. And there we are. We're all lined up, so kill rotate. Now we'll turn on auto burn. And let's see what our next step is. I already know, but I, let's see what we, we're having in our notes. After you start the burn, or even a few seconds before the burn has started, shut off the plan and IMFD's map program so that you can see the result of the burn in real time. All right, let's do that. So it's warp time forward, and again, we're going to turn the plan off over here in a moment. And we can, uh, we've got 1,000, 1,100 meters, so one thing we can do is uh, keep it on until the burn's like halfway complete. It really doesn't matter. I mean, just whatever. Now we can turn plan off, and we'll see everything updating. And the burn's done. So I believe the next thing that I have in the notes, at least it should be, is that once the burn's complete, we might need to tap the uh, translations one way or the other to make sure that the PEA is in fact where we want it because sometimes after the burn's complete you'll find that your PEA is off by you know 400 kilometers or maybe even a thousand kilometers or more but all it takes to get to where you want it is just one tap of uh, translation and that's it so let's check our notes uh, once the burn's complete yep use translations to make any final adjustments so we're done with that step now let's warp time forward over to the uh, over to the base over to uh, Ganymede, rather. You know, one darn thing I forgot again was that we can start taking into account uh, the base alignment, like, even before we did any of this, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think we probably should have already done that. So let me let me go off script here for just a moment. Let's go to uh, Menu, Configuration, Landing Target Set, and let's set it to, uh, where are we going, Europa? Europa Base. Now back to map, mod, yeah, see, that's something that we should do even before, we, we should do it 
like while we're setting up the DV and the map, I think we should probably set it up that early, maybe. So let's put that in the notes. Let's add it. So, okay, after we copy the orbit eject over to the delta velocity, actually right like right before this step that's when we should do that's when we should uh that's when we should go to menu can in, in this page yeah i think that's the right time to do it actually hang on maybe that's not quite right because we want to do it we want to we want to set it up on the map side so okay here here's the time to do it now load IMFD's map program on the side that has the orbit eject program and share it with the delta velocity program. Um, note also at this point, you should go to the global configuration by pressing MNU from the main from from IMFD's main menu. What is it? So it's menu mod. So by pressing menu mod from IMFD's main menu and set the landing target. I feel like that's something that we need to do. All right, but we'll we'll refine it like maybe on the next top since we didn't get it since we didn't do it this time. So we can't really add any more notes beyond that. All right, now back to this point. Okay, so normally we would we would start warping time forward until we're going to be over to Europa. But if we can, since we're still this far out, we might want to see if we can do any sort of uh, kind of thinking about that base alignment. bear with me for a moment and this is all part of the learning process you know creating creating procedures so just trying to figure out what the best thing to do here is I don't really feel like there's any way to resolve this uh, right here at Europe uh, right here at wherever we're at Ganymede so we're gonna the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna warp time forward to get away from Ganymede just like the uh, notes say at this point Again, I like to warp time forward at like a hundred or a thousand and just watch the HUD as it spins around. And once it spins around to uh, either prograde or retrograde, preferably like retrograde, just, just watch it go all the way around basically until you can see your moon or planet in the rear view mirror like that. Now we're basically retrograde to Ganymede. So kill rotate. And now we can warp time forward at 10,000. But we want to watch our PET because apparently the time of flight between between Ganymede and uh, Europa is, uh, is less. I'm not sure by how much, but you know, we're only, you know, it took six days to go from Callisto to Ganymede, but it's only gonna take us like, it looks like two days, not even two days to go from Ganymede to Europa. So we, we there's not a lot of opportunity here for mid-course correction is my point. But let's get well away from Ganymede just so that its gravity is not affecting us really. And again, it's kind of a balance between watching the PET and what your PEA is doing. And our PEA is holding quite well. We're still, we still have some influence here from Ganymede. Let's uh, get out. Let's get out away from that. PEA is coming down nicely. It's, so we probably won't have much correction there. But the uh, base angle is horrible. <laughs> so if we can do something about that before we arrive, we'll be much happier people. So again, I'm just kind of non-scientifically eyeballing what I'm seeing here. Gravity's still 0 0.1, so it has some effect on us. So we'll say at 100,000 seconds. That's good. So let's see what we can do about the space alignment. Let's reference Europa. And let's uh, bring up interplanetary MFD on this side. And let's see if we can remember how to uh, set up the base alignment. We did it before. 
believe we determined that base approach was the way to go. Yeah, so I'm going to start making some notes about this. Uh, I'm actually going to make it on another page, and then I'll figure out where to insert them later. So, let's say notes about base alignment. And we'll center that up, and we'll, oh, we won't worry about formatting. Uh, it's not what I wanted. There we go. Okay, so we know it's about base alignment. Note one. Okay, bring up IMFD's base approach program. And reference the body that you're going to that you're going to land on. Then set the approach four to orbit insert. Orbit insert. And target the base, which in this case is going to be Europa base. And actually, I'm just going to make that part of this step. Let's bring up IMFD's base approach program. Reference the body you're going to land on and press TGT to target the base that you're going to land on. Those kind of all go together. Then set the approach for value to orbit insert, which we've already done. And set the altitude value to what you want it to be, like 30k. Set the altitude value for your target altitude, e.g. 30k. And then we also have this prograde retrograde issue. Uh, when we arrive at Europa, are we going to be prograde or are we going to be retrograde? And again, in this case, we're actually going to be prograde. So this is correct, but we need to make a note that we might need to change that. Check your arrival inclination at the target body. If you are arriving retrograde, retrograde, then make sure you set the prograde retrograde option according according to your inclination okay so we have that the only problem is this is such an enormous amount of delta v that i'm guessing that this is just a completely invalid plan yeah this is just i think a, i think a better way to do this actually It's going to be like this. Let's go to the course program. This is basically what we ended up doing last time anyway. I noticed when I watched the uh, video playback. So we're going to go to the delta velocity program. And we're going to say let's figure out a maneuver that we can do. And uh, let's give ourselves plenty of time. 360 seconds. And we're going to start by zeroing out all the previous stuff. Zero. Zero. And zero. Bring up interplanetary MFD on this side. And turn on the plan. Am I shared? Yeah, I'm shared. 
And now we're going to say, what if we put in some prograde at this point? Actually, let me turn the plan off for a second. Why is that suddenly changing with no velocity? I mean, see what I mean? If I have zero, zero, zero plan, and it's Matt's course plan, so that should be, yeah. You know, but it's saying with zero velocity, it's going to change my PEA by this tremendous amount. I really understand that. Actually, let me reference. I'm referencing Ganymede. That's wrong. I should be referencing Jupiter now. That's why. Yep, that's that's the why. Source is self, or that's our vessel, and we're we're now referencing Jupiter. So now we've got something that we can use here so that's something I'll have to note if I decide that this is the better way to do it again set that to something reasonable so you give yourself time to set up the set up the maneuver and we're gonna just say you know what do we need to do to bring the base alignment down and that's not doing us anything so let's just adjust that uh, probably probably plane change That's not helping. I mean, it's not really helping anyway. That's a lot of plane change for very little benefit. Let's try inward outward. That's probably what we want. That's coming down quite a bit at a time. But it's also raising our PEA a little bit, but uh, it's okay. We can fix that on the other with another variable. So now let's check in uh, forward, backward. Okay, that's bringing the PEA down a little bit. That's also it's, you know, raising the angle a little bit. So let's kind of zero that out for a moment. Now we'll see what plane change does. It's taking the PEA up, and it's raising the angle. So let's go the other way. Hmm. Okay, we've got... Uh, that's not what I meant to do. Do an adjustment here down to one. Now we've got the base pretty well aligned. And we've got a reasonable PEA, but we still want to bring that down a bit. So let's come to DVI. And go this way with it. And that's putting our angle farther into the positive. So yeah, we'll be able to get it this way. I think this must be the better way to do it because going through that base approach program this far out seems like a total useless endeavor. Okay, that's going the wrong way. There we go. Now we'll have it. There we got it. So now just a touch of one of the other variables just to get that all the way to zero. And maybe a touch of in, uh, forward backward. Okay, just a touch of inward outward to maybe raise the PEA to touch to just bring it out to the surface or something. Okay. And let's see now with plane uh, forward backward. Hmm. Plane change. Oops, overshot. Uh, we'll go with that. That's that's really close, uh, and it's kind of changing a little bit. It's actually going farther into the negative, so let's put it into the positive a little bit. And I would say that's going to be our burn, and most likely, I think this will be the method that I'll put into that document, because setting up the... setting up the base approach program, it just doesn't seem to do any good. Even to, even to use it as a starting point, sometimes you'll you know, like use target intercept as your starting point and then put it into the delta V program, but, uh, or rather use orbit eject as your starting point and put that into the delta V program. But in this case, using the base approach program as the starting point, I mean, it had us a, it had a 4,000 delta V. That's just insane. That's not a starting point. That's a, 
that's a laughable okay anyway So it kind of looks like actually, all right, we'll go with that solution. That's got a angle that's really low and it's kind of coming down a little bit anyway. In fact, it might be a little bit too low, uh, but our PEA is a good number. So let's page over and bring up the burn vector. Translation. Rotation. And if we translate uh, or rather rotate down into the right a little bit, we'll get the crosshairs lined up save the autopilot the trouble and yeah, it's close enough it's auto burn okay so we're getting a little bit off script uh, from at least from the previous plan but I mean we're still really close to what we're doing we're just kind of changing the order of things a little bit and again I don't think you can ever write a guide that can ever be you know do this and then do that and then do this it's gonna you have to use your own intuition and your own understanding of the way things work to to go off script occasionally or to go off plan occasionally things are gonna be a little bit different from flight to flight you know I mean if we sat here and we wrote a, a guide for one exact flight of course we could uh, we could get it exactly a b c d e and we repeat that every time but you're not going to do the exact same flight every time it's always going to be a little bit different all right swarp time forward and we only have a uh, 29 meters a second so turn plan off take a sip here okay so that's done now let's find out what we have in our notes about our next uh, order of business, ignoring the fact that we have all that. So basically mid-course correction stuff. Um, watch your PET to determine when you're halfway toward the destination body. You can also refer to orbit MFD to help know when you're halfway there. Use the halfway point as a way for determining the better time to do an MCC, and that's basically what we just did. And if you get to the halfway point and see that your PEA is trending upward, then you should do a correction. If it's not, uh, basically if it's trending down, then you should continue forward, uh, like we discussed in the last video. Uh, now here we already talked about, you know, setting up a mid-course correction. It's often better to just bump the translation thrusters around. You know, if you only have to adjust your PEA or one of your other settings by a kilometer or a degree, then just use translation. If you have to do a lot, then it's better to set up the Delta V program. Uh, with map that's what we're talking about here and we've explained basically how to do it you know for small MCCs uh, to set up the delta velocity maneuver and, and we just did all that so once the uh, delta velocity maneuver is set up press page to uh, burn it and we did that and after you start the burn uh, shut off the map we did that and then all subsequent MCCs will be determined by the PET and PEA values as seen in IMFD so what we want to do now is we just kind of want to warp time forward and, and cut time in half and watch the PEA and, the, and in this case also watch the angle to the uh, base. So let's go forward and we're going to say that at 50,000 seconds we're going to kind of check in again and see how things look. Uh, but we will also monitor the PEA and the base along the way. If things start getting really crazy then we might come back out of time warp earlier than uh, 50,000 seconds. So we're just kind of trying to watch for any trend. Is it, you know, is it going to wobble up and then go back down? Is the uh, angle of the base going to get ne farther into the negative, but then turn right around and go back into the positive? Kind of looking for that kind of stuff. But if we get halfway there and things are just continually going up, uh, I mean, if we get to the 50,000 point, you know, half of where we were, and things are just continually going up, then we don't want to, we don't want to waste any more time. We want to just do another correction. See the angle here is getting a bit out. And everything just seems to me like it's just continually going up. So at 50,000, we're going to do another correction. Okay, now with this type of correction, uh, since we're adjusting both angle, since we need to get the angle and the PEA correct, I would say that it's probably not a good idea to just use guesswork with the translation thrusters. I mean, we can try it see what happens but we'll probably be better off setting up a uh, delta v maneuver okay so if i use a 
that lateral translation it's making the angle worse if i use lateral translation this way it's bringing the pea down and bringing the angle to the base down and if i use a little bit of up translation it's bringing the pea down actually i probably can get this with just a little bit of translation because so i can see that you know what i'm doing here is having enough of an impact so getting the PEA down to about 60. Now if I use lateral translation, it's bringing the angle down and it's bringing the PEA down. I don't think I'd be able to do this much better with uh, even if I set up a manure. Yeah, this is fine. So we'll get the base angle back to be zero. There we, go. there we are. And the PEA is 30. So now we'll warp time forward until PET is about half that number. Let's kind of take a look outside though, see where we're at. There's Ganymede there, and Europa should be quite visible by now. There's Europa. Okay, let's go ahead and warp time forward. Watching our PEA, angle to the base, slipping a little bit. It's going up, that's getting farther into the negative, so at 25,000 we'll check in again. And there we are, we're at 25,000. And uh, yeah, we can certainly do the same thing, or at least we can try. Just tap translation thrusters a bit. Definitely sufficient here because we have such small changes to make. And we've got the base angle. Uh, and in fact, since we see that it's kind of slipping into the negative, we can always do that overshooting thing where we slip it out this way a little bit more. That's probably too much, maybe too much. Maybe that much, and then uh, just go forward until we're at, say, 10,000 seconds. See that? Well, of course, now it's going to jump. PET. Okay, there we are. We're less than 10,000 seconds, so uh, let's do this again. Europa. Very pretty destination I think and I think it's like one of the most likely other bodies in our entire solar system to harbor to potentially harbor life because it's like an icy shell and it's suspected that uh, with the tidal effects of Jupiter that the that it might have a lot of water under the, the under under the icy shell so Europa has a 0 0.02 gravitational influence on our vessel right now Let's bring up map MFD, make sure Europa, let's target Europa base. I have two bases on Europa. Hmm. I have three bases on Europa. I must have accidentally uh, put an extra copy of my base, but I know all my bases are, are Europa, are base, are moon name space base. So it would be this one. This is the one that I made. Oh, I know what that other Europa base is. I downloaded that a long time ago. That's somebody. That's something somebody else made. I'll have to delete that. And then I know that that one up there, that's from... I think that actually comes with the uh, UC... Like the UCGO stuff. All right, anyway, we are... We have a bit of an angle here. To... Let me actually check now menu configuration yeah europa space base because if i put in the wrong base name there and then put it on here we'd have a really big problem i'm just trying to think if uh i can use any of the other tools at this point i don't think i can the base approach program i think you really have to be within the strong soi of the body before the base approach program will do you any good and by in because jupiter's gravitational influence is so strong we have to be like almost on top of Europa before we could ever use that and that just wouldn't do us any good. So tapping translation, bringing the angles of the base down. PEA is fine. So now let's go forward to 3600. Eh, 3000. Oh, no. Kind of overshot that a bit. And let's bring up Orbit MFD on this side and copy that information over to the HUD. You can see how close we are to Europa, but we're still, we still only have a gravitational pull of 0.15 because Jupiter is just such a beast. 
Let's rotate over to uh, so we can see Europa in the forward view. And this is a uh, improved texture that I downloaded. This isn't the default. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description where you can download the improved. In fact, all the moons of Jupiter that I that I have, all four, have improved textures that I've downloaded from Orbit Hanger. So we're at 30 minutes again, so I'm going to end it here. If you like this part of the video, like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. You'll be notified when I upload new Orbiter videos, especially if when you subscribe, you check that box that says email you when I upload new Orbiter videos. If you, so if you like this stuff and you want to stay on top of it, uh, definitely subscribe. And if not, you can just go to my YouTube channel every now and then and look at my recent uploads and you'll see what I've uh, uploaded. But you'll miss a lot of stuff if you don't get those notifications if you're not subscribed. And check for links in the description down below. I'll have links to uh, all these bases that I made. Uh, I made bases for all the moons of Jupiter. And it's available in one zip file. You can download it, unzip it into your Orbiter directory, and then you'll have all these bases that I'm using. And I'll put links to that uh, line drawing tool that I use, although I didn't use it in this part of the video, but I'll have that in there as well. And I'll also have a link for the notes that I'm making so that you can read over those notes and check off the items if you want to follow along. But I think you really definitely need to watch these videos in addition to reading those notes because, uh, you know, just because some of the notes might not be as obvious uh, if you don't hardly, if you're not watching the video or if you haven't watched the video. You know, there's some additional information that I'm saying that I'm not going to write in the notes because I don't want the notes to be 9,000 pages, you know, I want it to be something reasonable. So that's it, and I will see you in the next part.